I'm back! What's up, YouTube? It's been a while, hasn't it? Uh, I've been extremely, extremely absent for the last six months or so. I believe that the last video that I posted was back in J July or August. A lot's gone on since then. I have been in and out of the hospital several times. Um, I've been having a lot of, of issues with my kidneys and with just my health in general. Um, I've, well, I've been off work since July as well. Um, the last video that I posted, I believe it was um, some fishing uh, gear setup or something like that. Um, but I can, I can assure you guys I will be back. I have a surgery coming up at the end of January that will have me laid out for a little while, but I promise that I will be back. Um, as soon as I'm healed up from that surgery, we have tons of new stuff coming out. Um, I'm in the process of getting my uh, concealed carry license. I'm, I haven't taken the classes yet. But, um, I will eventually. I'm still trying to save up the money for it. I am also getting ready to buy my first handgun. Um, I think I'm going to end up going with a Glock 19. So, over the course of probably the next two, th two to three months, a lot of the videos will be just like this. Me sitting here, I'm actually laying in bed right now, um, talking to the camera. So over the course of the next couple of months this will be the format for at least a little while and then after I am healed sufficiently we will progress into <clears throat> um, more stuff outside um, in the meantime I, I do plan on getting out a little bit and shooting some outside video um, maybe going to the to the gun store and all that kind of thing um, but for the most part it'll be this type of format where it's just me and the camera uh, now that I've given you guys a little bit of an update um, as I said I am trying to buy my first firearm and <clears throat> being new to the to the gun world I've shot BB guns I shot shotguns last year and then I've shot airsoft. That's that is the extent of my um, gun knowledge. I watch a lot of gun videos on YouTube, but for the most part, growing up, we were not into guns at all. Mom most definitely wasn't into guns. Dad, as far as I knew, not really either. Um, and to be quite honest, looking back on on my childhood, growing up. I don't think I was really mature enough to have a gun, even if if my parents had said, you know, you can go, we, we'll buy you one for Christmas or your birthday or whatever. I don't feel that I was mature enough. <clears throat> um, but anyway, through the next series of videos, um, I'll be basically talking about uh, firearm safety, um, maybe once I buy my my firearm I will uh, disassemble it and then show you guys the different parts and all that kind of stuff so that way um, anyone that's new to the to the sport like I am has a basic knowledge of what they're looking for or how a gun works that way when they go to a firing range or they go to the store to handle a gun it's not completely foreign to them and I feel that having knowledge before you go to uh, handle any guns, whether it's at a, a store or at a gun range or wherever it may be, I feel that at least having the basic knowledge is very important. Um, and the big question that I had growing, or not growing up, um, going into buying my first firearm well what's what's an acceptable caliber 
then you know you'll get these guys that'll tell you that oh you need to have a nine millimeter or a a 45 or a 40 or a 357 sig or you know a 44 magnum if you ask me I think in my mind the best answer to this question would be to have whatever you can control if you go to a gun range and you shoot a 357 Magnum and you can control that more power to you if you're you know a younger person or someone that has limited core strength or and I hate using this because it's so stereotypical but you're a female that may not have the dexterity that somebody else might have if you, all you can shoot is a 22, then that's what you can shoot. You know, everybody's always, you know, you got to have a big gun, blah, 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 blah. No. Shoot what you're absolutely comfortable with. Because if you can shoot something and you're comfortable with it and can control it, then I think that that will make you the safest shooter possible. Um... Now, personally, I believe, I, and I haven't figured this out definitively, which I'm, I'm going to, I personally believe that I will be able to handle a 9mm um, because I have a, a moderate um, upper body, that a moderate strength upper body that I feel that I could control the recoil and, and run the... Uh, run the controls of the gun like the slide and and all the press the trigger and all that stuff um, but there are there are people out there that can't do that and that's perfectly fine you know just shoot whatever you're comfortable with don't don't let anybody try to convince you oh you need this this caliber or this caliber or even try to convince you of a certain brand because it's very important to buy what you're comfortable with or to shoot what you're comfortable with if you don't have if you don't have it in your budget to buy a gun but you know somebody that is willing to let you shoot one of their guns hey that's that's fine you know that actually I would almost recommend that if you if you want to be into guns but not you know buy a gun because a lot of people will let you shoot their guns if they're comfortable with it and that almost is cheaper because sorry my throat's really dry today um it's, it'll be cheaper because you'll only have to buy um ammunition and and whatever else you need to to go about your shooting for the day um but yeah I mean that's that's my input on on buying a new gun shoot what you're comfortable with and what you are willing to train with, especially if the gun is for concealed carry or for um, uh, home defense. Because if if you use a gun for concealed carry or home defense that you can't control, not only is that a danger to yourself, that's an extreme danger to anyone that's around you. Because you know, it's the middle of the night. Let's take for instance it's a home defense gun it's the middle of the night you know you hear somebody breaking down your door you pull mr. 357 magnum out of your out of your bedside table you go into your to your front room where you think that the person is and you know you fire off four or five different shots at the person after they fired at you or you know when you felt threatened and you miss them. Where's that bullet gonna go? It's not just gonna stop in midair like it does in the Matrix, you know, that that's TV stupid stuff. It's gonna go, you know, through the walls, through glass, through a door, whatever is beyond the perpetrator. And if that happens, that makes for a really bad night. Um 
so you want something that you can control um, and can safely put rounds downrange and um, are comfortable shooting. Now, as far as brand, you know, like I said before, people people say, oh, you should have a Glock or a Beretta or a Sig or even a 1911. Pick what feels good. You know, go to the gun store, handle the guns, and just, you know, don't pick up or don't buy the first thing that you pick up. You know, test multiple guns out, and it doesn't even have to be firing them. Hold them in your hand, grip them the way you're supposed to, and see if you can even, you know, in a in a non-threatening situation, just see if you can hold the gun in your hand and maintain a grip. Because if you can't maintain a grip while you're just standing there and nothing's going on, there's no way you're going to be able to maintain a grip when you got one or two guys coming at you and you're trying to defend yourself or really anyone around you. So you're doing yourself a disservice by buying a gun that you're not comfortable with. And it is extremely, extremely important to go to a gun range after you've, and actually it doesn't even have to be after you've bought your first gun, it can be before, but get an idea of the gun that you're looking for and go to, the, to a gun range where you can rent guns and rent the gun out and put, you know, 50, 100, 200, five, even 500 rounds, you know, put as many rounds through that particular type gun as you can because one that will tell you that you can control the gun safely two it in most cases I would think it would be able to help you root out um, guns with potential um, failure to feed problems or failure to eject problems or you know just mechanical issues that that you might run into um, but yeah, it's it's extremely important to train as much as you can. I realize that, you know, the average person can't necessarily go and shoot every week, you know. Um, I'll discuss more about that later, but there are other ways to train with your gun without having to actually go to the range. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's my basic startup knowledge to guns. Um, I will be posting hopefully another video within the next couple weeks um, with with more ideas and more um, basic gun info. And we're still going to do some fishing videos this year. Um, like I said, I've just been extremely busy and I've had a little bit of downtime due to my health. But I appreciate you I appreciate you guys stopping by, and uh, I hope that you stay tuned for future videos. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.